it's an account that I launched about two years ago. It's almost 300,000 followers now. And the mistake that I made in the beginning was I didn't ask for what you call shout outs in the memeers community or Instagram influencer communities. Mm -hmm. So it took me, I think, three months to get to 5,000 followers, which is quite slow. Um, And some of the other accounts that were coming in, they were not, not only were they networking because I was networking too, but they were asking the big accounts, Hey, would you mind giving a shout out to me? And they Mm -hmm. would, you know, they grew a little faster than I did at that time. And so I would say when you're starting off, there are a lot of people who are willing to help you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even now that I'm a bigger account, people ask me for shout outs and those who just kind of, Hey man, can I get a shout out? I don't really, I'm not really enticed to interact with them, but those who genuinely are having a conversation with you a couple of times, DM this and that, and they ask you for a shout out. It works. It really Mm -hmm. does work. People are out there who want to help you out, who want to get you noticed and so forth. So um, if I were to start again, I would do that. And it's a very important point here around when you're building anything, really, if you don't ask, you're not going to be given. So that's Mm -hmm. the big mistake that I was making was that that I wasn't asking. Uh, I think you also asked uh, what mistakes other people make. Is that correct? Yeah. What are some of the common mistakes you see other people making? So, you know, people don't have a focus or a purpose. Like I understand it's an Instagram account, but Mm -hmm. it is is still something that requires traction and you still have to have a purpose behind it. You still have to have a focus and a reason behind it. And so what many people do is they'll start generic accounts, like generic, you know, meme accounts and lifestyle accounts and so forth. And what happens is that they don't get a lot of traction because there's so many other ones that are out there like that. Or worse, there are some big ones that came early when Instagram uh, had just started and they've taken up that, you know, uh, sort of title of that big, generic, all-inclusive mm-hmm. account. And so it's very hard for you to compete. And so people don't do that very well. They don't have a purpose or focus. A lot of them just want to launch it off and then see what happens, which is fine if it's part of, you know, your experiment. The other thing that people don't do is they don't stay consistent, right? Mm-hmm. So they start off by, so one extreme is they're very generic. The other extreme is they're so specific and they're so inundated with this idea of I've got to make it perfect that putting out a post or a video becomes a very cumbersome activity. And Mm -hmm. so they fizzle out within two, three months of fantastic posts. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, they're gone because it's very hard to keep up. Right. Mm -hmm. So my belief is you start somewhere in the middle, have a focus and a reason. And then the more you can define your niche, Mm-hmm. the better it's going to be for you to attract that niche and then get the word of mouth going. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there are accounts, for example, that are very, you know, finance oriented. Okay. And within the finance, they're focusing on crypto and within right. crypto, they're focusing on Bitcoin. Okay. Right. Now imagine once that, once that account gets to a Bitcoin community, mm-hmm. excuse me, or once that account is discovered by five or 10 Bitcoin people, Okay. And then it's adding value. We'll talk about how you can add value, but let's say it's adding value right now Mm -hmm. that those 10 Bitcoin people have hundreds of people in their social circles across Mm -hmm. social media, in person, out of person, then they will tell them. That's how a lot of these accounts grow is that others literally go out of their way to say, Hey, I'm following this account. I love it. Or I learned from this account. So if the focus isn't there, people don't know what to expect from you because it's so generic. And then B they don't really know how to tell about you to somebody else saying to somebody, Hey, Corey, this is a finance account that I like is very different than, Hey, Corey, this is a crypto account that focuses on Bitcoin mm. because that focus, there's just a much more clarity, which then leads to action. And in this case, the action will be to follow the account. Right. And so on that note, what would you say is the most important metric that one who's trying to grow their social media following? So let's just stick with Instagram. What is the most important metric that one should be paying attention to? So the thing is, you have to keep in mind that a a follower journey or a user journey goes through three phases, right? There's the acquisition phase where you're trying to get them in. Mm -hmm. There is um, an engagement phase when you want to, you know, make them loyal to you and work with you and engage with you. And then there's one where is the retention phase. So you have to think about, okay, am I putting this post out because it's going to lead to a lot of growth for my account? Is that what my intention is? Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then the most important metric is shares. And for me, if you were to ask one metric, it's shares, because that means that somebody found a valuable to share. But sometimes that's not enough, because sometimes, look, you have 
a lot of your followers who came in, you know, following you for certain types of posts, okay? Mm. Or there are certain types of posts that they really, really enjoy. They may not get a lot of share, but they get a lot of likes. You want to put those out as well to continue to engage your existing, your current audience, mm. right? And then there's the saved. Um, saved and comments are the ones that are that allow you to see how many people are finding value that they will stay with you. So mm. if a post has a lot of saved, that means there was a lot of value and these people are most likely going to stay longer than had they not saved and saved with comments. Uh, so it, it's, it's across and you have to think it that way. Today, like for us, you know, we put anywhere from 10 to 12 posts and we have a defined reason for why we're putting those posts up. Some of these posts are with the intent of getting new followers in. Mm -hmm. Some of these posts are with the intent of engaging our existing audience and so forth. 